We're back once again for another roundup of what's been going on throughout the top leagues in Europe this weekend. This week we've got Madrid's recovery from their shock Betis defeat, who is on top in the Bundesliga and if the AC Milan spending spree has all been worth it. With that being said, I'm still a very ill Graham from HITC Euro and let's get on with this list. Let's kick things off in Germany where Borussia Dortmund have extended their league at the top of the Bundesliga by two points after a 6-1 thumping of Borussia Mönchengladbach. Peter Boz's team were taking no hostages against Gladbach with them 3-0 up by half time. Maximilian Philipp opened the scoring and then doubled the lead just 10 minutes later before Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang made it 3-0. And the Gabon forward smashed another two goals in to secure his first hat-trick of the season and his eighth goal so far this campaign. Lars Stindl did pull one back for Gladbach but that was just a consolation goal as Dortmund punched them even further with Julian Wiegel netting a 6th and their 19th goal in just 6 games. They're now 3 points clear of Bayern. They couldn't, couldn't they? Speaking of Bayern, they dropped points again this week, this time against Wolfsburg. However, things actually look quite good for Carlo Ancelotti's side, with Robert Lewandowski netting his 7th goal this season from the penalty spot. And Iron Robin doubled the lead before halftime, and that Bayern looked like they were good for the win. Before they once again ruined my accumulator by letting two goals in against a Wolfsburg side who, let's be honest, have been quite poor for a while now, but they did manage to show some resilience and, and fight their way back into the game. Maximilian Arnold pulled one back just before the hour mark, and then four minutes before time, Daniel Didavi stunned the home crown by securing a draw and taking them to six points this season. That was a great result for Wolfsburg, but now Bayern Munich have conceded more goals this season in just six games than they did in the opening 10 matches last season. Worried Bayern fans? And finally, let's have a chat about Hoffenheim, who are continuing to surprise just about everybody in Germany. After finishing fourth last season, they started this campaign with the same gusto, already beating Bayern, and they're still unbeaten in the league. With the likes of Mark Huth, Serge Gnabry, and Sandro Wagner going forward, Julian Nagelmann's side are just fantastic. This week, they picked up their fourth win of the season, with goals coming from Dennis Geiger and Lucas Rupp against Schalke. It looks like the Bundesliga's youngest ever manager could just be ready to challenge Bayern and Dortmund this campaign, which looks like it's going to be really, really exciting. Over onto Spain, where we need to talk about that Real Madrid team who are looking to recover from their defeat at the hands of Real Batiste midweek. Well, who better to do it against than bottom place Alvarez, who they started really well against, with Dani Caballos netting after just 10 minutes. And it looked like Real could be on course for a really big win, but Alvarez shocked the visitors by picking up an equaliser just 5 minutes before half time. Madrid did hit straight back thanks to another Caballos goal, but it was a really unconvincing 2-1 win against easily the worst team in the league at the moment. The reigning champions are now 7 points behind Barca at the top of the league, so what is going wrong? Well, as pointed out by Gehel and Balaguer, they have missed just a whole host of chances. In fact, they've missed 23 despite creating the most chances in the league, so goals really have been the problem, and Ronaldo's return is doing little to help. In fact, things have been so off for Madrid that they even had 12 players on the pitch against Alavaz for a brief time. Come on Zidane, sort it out. Incredibly, they've not won their first three games at home in the Bernabeu, and that's something that they haven't done in over 25 years. So, all eyes on Madrid when they take on Espanyol next Sunday. Over to their rivals now, Barcelona, where things couldn't be any different for the Catalonians. Six games played, six games won, 20 goals scored, and just two conceded. Barca really aren't messing about this season, and they managed to pick up another win in a 3-0 result over Girona. However, things weren't quite as comfortable as the result suggests, with Barca needing two on goals before Luis Suarez netted a 69th minute third. They actually had fewer shots on the home side, but still got the job done, so who can complain about another win? And finally, let's have a quick chat about Atletico Madrid, who closed the gap on Barca to just two points. Diego Simeone's side proved just how good they are following a 2-0 win over Inform Sevilla, another team who have been looking really good so far this season. It was a pretty tight affair, but Yannick Carrasco opened the goal scoring in the second half before Anton Griezmann scored his 85th goal in all competitions for Atleti. With the team now on 14 points, they look good to challenge both Barca and Real Madrid, especially with how tight they keep things. If they can pick results up against these two big teams, then who knows how far they could go. We're off to Italy now, where we probably need to have a serious talk about AC Milan. Okay, so they are 4 points off the top of the table, but let's not forget just how much money they spent this summer. 
Yes, they splashed out 175 million on new players, but it looks like Vincenzo Montea may have to wait a little bit longer before his new players get really well bent in. And it looks like it hasn't happened yet following their 2-0 defeat at the hands of Sampdoria. Milan only managed 6 shots against the hosts, which, let's be honest, is not good for a team with their firepower. It did look like Milan and Sampdoria were both comfortable with a draw until Duvan Zapata netted in the 72nd minute before Ricky Alvarez scored an injury time winner. Milan have now conceded 8 goals so far in the league, but only netted 10 in reply, and that is with the addition of Benucci and Ricardo Rodriguez in the back. Will Milan turn it around and secure a Champions League spot? It's really hard to say yes at the moment. Now onto a side that we talked about last week, and we're going to gush over them again because Napoli were once again brilliant. They really have been fantastic this season and show no signs of slowing down. After a stunning turnaround against Lazio midweek, they followed it by another entertaining match against Spal. And Spal actually took the lead in the game before Lorenzo Insigne pulled one back. Jose Callahan made it 2-1, but the home side netted with just 12 minutes to go before Gulam popped up with an 83 minute winner to make it 6 from 6 to set the early pace for the league. Sarri's side managed 21 shots against the home team, so they probably should have won more easily, but Napoli have definitely been great value for money in terms of entertainment this season. And finally in Italy, we might as well turn our attentions to Juventus once again, who are facing off in the Turin derby against Torino. Despite the very fiery atmosphere, Juve were quick to put out any fire that Torino had, with our man Dybala scoring again after just 16 minutes. A red card for Baselli didn't help Torino as Allegri's side tore them apart with Miralem Pjanic really looking outstanding. The Bosnian playmaker picked up two assists, created four chances and scored a lovely strike from just outside the box to make it 2-0. Alexandro popped up with a header before Dybala added a second and his 10th goal in just six games. He is really on fire. And let's finish off with a quick look at what's been going on in France before I totally lose my voice. PSG only managed to draw against Montpellier and it looked like they really missed Neymar, who was out with a foot injury, possibly caused by Cavani because those two are having a right Barney at the moment. And it seems like it's this argument that could actually halt a PSG season if they're not careful. They really do need both men firing on all cylinders and I'm not sure it helps if PSG are trying to pay off Cavani to allow Neymar to take all the penalties if the reports are to be believed. Anyway, not the best performance from PSG, but a well-earned point by Montpellier. I'm going to wrap this week up with a look at Monaco, who thumped lousy Lille this week 4-0. As we said before, Lille really aren't good these days. Monaco, however, are fantastic, and they're showing that they don't need the likes of Bakayoko, Mendy or Mbappe to continue their excellent form from last season. And a lot of this is down to the fact that Radamel Falcao is back to some fine form, hitting another brace this weekend. The Colombian hitman was still trying to recover from that horrific knee injury back in 2014, but it looks like he might just be back to something close to his best. He's already netted 11 times this season, and it looks like nothing is going to slow him down. El Tigre is back. Monaco are now just a point off PSG at the top of the league, so all eyes will be on them to see if they can keep up the pace before the two teams meet in November. And that's it for this week's roundup. Which performance do you think was the best? And let us know your player of the week in the comments below. For us, it's got to be Miralem Pjanic. Be sure to like and share this video and hit that subscribe button to join Team HITC Euro right now.